in the news about robot assisted surgery. Um, I think you guys have all probably read in the news about the um, robot assisted surgery that was made for cardiac patients who died. There's been quite a lot of uh, you know, you know, news stories about injuries that have been caused by using robots. And uh, there's you know, potentially a potential there being jailed for about some potential deaths in the public field. Now the reason for that is we've got a complex system uh, of surgeons and machinery requiring technical and non-technical skills. There are very, very few guidelines to mitigate risk, actually probably almost no guidelines in uh, robotic urology surgery. And so this was the simulation was the ideal tool for us to actually create a uh, guideline that also prospectively analyze risk and try and use any kind of risk to patients in our theaters. So what we did was we got together a couple of years ago and we created a high fidelity point of care multidisciplinary cardiac arrest simulations in robotic theaters. So we followed a baseline simulation um, with some structured debriefing and training which emphasized safety and hazard analysis. And the guideline that you'll see was also uh, refined using the simulation. We then tested the guideline again a couple of times and had more modifications to pathways. Uh, we then followed up the simulation with an eight month uh, simulation, again with the same, exact same team to look at retention of skill. Um, the, this took a lot of manpower. So there's trained observers monitoring the team performance and we use a validated observational team assessment questionnaire. And we also measured times from cardiac arrest uh, recognition with robot de-docking, CPR, and cardioversion. So this, this is a, a video that's um, it's about 10 minutes long, but we'll just, we'll just flip through it quickly for you guys to see what we're doing. So as you can see, when they come in, the clinical team doesn't, I mean, they've been told they're going to run a simulation, but we booked the theatres and you can see it's a simulation patient. Um, so, yeah, so this as you can see, we, we start off with the setup. So, we do a team brief. Um, that is the simulation team standing in the background, Red Back Passard and another one of the surgical colleagues. There's a couple of um, simulation fellows um, helping out as well. On the other side will be the team that's actually going to be doing the simulation. Yeah, just uh, there's still volume, I don't know. That's okay. I mean, it's mainly for the fact, so as you can see, we're using, we're in the robotic theatre, we've got a mannequin that's all set up with ports. So when it comes down to doing the same, the team docks the robot as they would with a patient and then they then carry on and you know, do some manipulations that we can then see. When there's a cardiac arrest, we just have a look. You can just forward it, you'll see that Megan will, at the moment of cardiac arrest, we then time the minute they recognize the cardiac arrest to the uh, robot being de-docked and then the CPR starting and then the DC cardioversion. I'm sorry there's no volume on this, but um, yeah, we'll just move on then. As you can see, so they have to do CPR. So it's all done in as much of real time as we can. We don't speed anything up during the simulation. We let them actually carry on as they normally would. Okay. So the... Simulations, as I said, was used to help Craig. Craig Lyons basically did this algorithm on your own. Um, he wrote the algorithm, but using the simulation, we kind of refined quite a bit of the algorithm. So you can see that in what we have now is what people will actually say when there's a cardiac arrest. So there's a verbal response at the time. So the kinesis has a clear cut, um, you know, tools. He basically they basically get told to say, "This is an emergency. Dedock the robot now." Because people are, the whole team is trained, when they hear that, they know exactly what they're going to do. And everyone then confirms according to what they're doing. The, the, next, the next slide shows you where everyone stands. So again, this, this is very clear as to what each member of the team is doing and what they're expected to do at a time of cardiac arrest. So the template guideline we successfully modified and we've basically got a specific 
tool for this department because obviously the positioning of people depends on what your theatres look like. The simulations we found correlated with improvements in time to interventions and the OTAS scoring is improved for the EM surgical and the anaesthetic team. So if you look at time to specific interventions, before we had a baseline, this is in seconds, so at baseline you've got 40 seconds for de-docking, 101 seconds to CPR, and 302 seconds as baseline before any training was done. After training we get down to 25 seconds for de-docking, um, 48 seconds to CPR, and quite a big jump to cardioversion, so from 302 seconds to 86 seconds. Retention at eight months, pretty good. We've got 40 seconds at de-docking, 69 seconds at CPR, and 189 seconds to cardioversion. So this was quite a novel approach to designing guidelines using simulation iteratively tested the guideline. By repeating the simulations, we were identifying latent risks and we addressed them to mitigate any kind of further impact. This helped us uh, clearly develop the guidelines for this local environment and hopefully continue training. All the simulation correlated with improvements in team performance and with a significant reduction in time and delay to the interventions that were required. We will be testing everyone again at yearly intervals because we found that the retention scoring was pretty good. So I don't think you'd need to do a simulation every six months, but I'm, I think about one year is pretty much what most research suggests that you do need to do this training to retain, um, retain training. And that's it. Sorry about the video. Considering you have to shut down an entire theatre in the morning, it's going to be very difficult to convince the trust for us to do that for six months. So I think you have to balance it between um, training and trust needs. Because if you did have to shut the theatre down for the whole morning, and that's you know, a list spot, a list there. And how many? Uh, well, just one. Uh, well, if it's the Thursday, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah. So if you know, that's, that's a lot of people to train and a lot of this to shut down every six months. Thank you very much. Okay, um, last talk. Um, <laughs>